right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. If you guys hear somebody screaming for help up here, it's probably the button on these pants. <laughs> I got into a pair of 32s this morning. August 5th, I was in a 36. So it's uh, my uh, my waistline is, is is dwindling. Mindy says I look sick, but uh, even Doug was watching the other day and he said I can tell you've lost weight on the video. And I was like, well, thanks. I kind of do appreciate that. Just so you know that, Douglas. If you have your Bibles with you, please open them up to the book of Colossians. We're going to be doing some skipping and some jumping. As we read through this, um, before anybody wants to fuss at me for cutting things out, I want to throw a couple things at you here that one, Paul was a very eloquent writer. He wrote, um, he could have wrote a lot of law books, he really could have. Um, he puts a lot of things in there and sometimes they're rabbit trails that come off to something else, so what we're skipping is not... Um, I don't want you to hear what I'm not saying and say that it's not important and it's not relevant to this, uh, but just for the sake of time, for the amount of what we're going to read, this cuts out some of the rabbit trails of other information that Paul was giving you, and it kind of streamlines the points that Paul was making. Um, that's what we'll be doing here in the book of Colossians, and we'll be uh, reading in um, parts of chapter number one, parts of chapter number two. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know how long it's going to take to do this. Um, everybody, <coughs> your eyes just open a little bit wider and you can almost hear the sigh. When I said I don't know how long it's going to take to do this, I'm not meaning we might be here till two. We could. Uh, but we'll likely be back in this same area tonight. And if we don't get finished tonight, we'll be back in the same area until we get through with this because there's a whole lot uh, that we could really stop and dwell upon. Um, and just depending upon how God's going to allow me to, to move through it and how quickly uh, we could be in Colossians chapter 1 and 2 for quite some time. But at least for the now, that's where we'll be this morning and likely tonight. Um, and if, if you'll allow me to give you a couple headers that maybe we will we'll touch on through this process um, one we're in this together and when I say in this together we are in this life and we are in God's work together as one body. Um, Paul spent a lot of time talking about uh, being uh, a one body, uh, uh, but being many different parts and many different members. Uh, we have, if you'll allow me to lay it out there for you as, as easily as I can, and then come back and, and um, read some of this, um, If, yeah, we can go that way. Oftentimes as churches and church members, we get so closed down and uh, uh, locked into the point that it's only Oakdale. It's only Oakdale that is of the uh, utmost importance and relevance. But what is equally important is that if Monroe Christian down the road, if they are thriving and succeeding, then so are we. If Beatty Swamp over here is thriving and succeeding, so are we. If Grace Baptist down on this side, thriving, succeeding, so are we. And you look at me and say, well, preacher, how, how do you say that and in what sense does that make? Because it's God's people. 
It's God's word. It's still our brothers and sisters. We only look at this in an us and them mentality. And, and, and when you look at that as an us and them uh, from different churches, you have the same mentality from within the church that it's us and them. And the us and them are uh, uh, what, uh, and again, you, if you allow me to be uh, plain spoken this morning, the us and them would be the faithful members and the non-faithful members, the doers and the non-doers. The us and them are those that uh, uh, feel that they are of some sort of importance versus those that may think that they're not really important. But I want us to understand we're all God's children. And wherever Cecil and Ann go, if they are thriving, the kingdom of God is thriving. Whether it's uh, uh, it, down here at the lake, whether it's uh, on the side of the road somewhere, what, wherever their travels take them, if they are thriving within the kingdom of God, then the kingdom of God is thriving, therefore so are we. We have to broaden our mentality of what we uh, of things that we look at, but in doing so, uh, we're going to have to expand our minds into what we're going to allow ourselves to love, what we're going to allow ourselves to pray for, what we're going to allow ourselves to even be a part of. It's not an us and them. I can't, you know, as Paul wrote to the many different churches that he either had visited or hadn't visited, uh, uh, part of what, you know, what we would uh, uh, be kind of passing over in some of this is Paul is saying the words that there are many there that have never seen my face. And even though I desire to come and visit you, you know, he said, I must needs to go here first. He, he has a, a, another job or an important thing to go there. And just because, you know, the, uh, the, the, the Colossian church is having to wait upon another church it doesn't make them any less important it doesn't make their work uh, uh, non-existent he is just simply stating that hey I got to go here first before I can come there I'm not saying you're not important it's not an us and a them it's I've got tons of things to do if Paul's church in one part of Asia is thriving then the word of God is succeeding I will try to let you know where I'm going to skip. And I will try to let you know. Otherwise, just be free in what you're reading and try to, to skim with me, okay? Um, I'm not sure that I'll be great at doing that, but I will do my best to let you know where to skip. Uh, and I may just give you the number, and that's what you're going to look for. We're going to start in verse number 9. And just so I can let you know, the, for this cause, this is talking about uh, the, his, his uh, hearing and knowledge of their faith. Okay? If we can, if we, you allow me to be a uh, simple put, just as that, for this cause, that's what we're talking about, is, is Paul has heard of their, uh, of their faith and things that are going on there. All right? Um, you can back up, you can read uh, the other parts of, uh, of chapter 1, and you can read on through and figure out all the great things that are going on. But uh, for today's purposes, we're starting verse number 9. Verse number 9 says, within the book of Colossians chapter 1, the Bible says this, For this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us to the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins." who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created, skip to 20. And having made peace 
through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the gospel of the uh, from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached skip with me the verse 6 chapter 2 as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk ye in him rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye had been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. In whom also you were circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and the putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Let us pray. And we, Father, Lord, as we come before you again here this morning, God, we're thankful, Father, to be back in your house. Father, we're thankful, Lord, for many things, God, that you've done for us. Uh, Father, we're thankful, Lord, that uh, uh, no, no matter uh, uh, what's happening, Lord, uh, uh, within specific churches, Lord, that uh, your kingdom can, uh, can still thrive, Lord, through the prayers of other saints from other places, Lord, that uh, uh, no, no matter where your uh, the, the forefront of your work may be, Lord, that we can have a direct impact upon those things. Father, we just uh, ask you, Lord, here this morning that you would just help to expand our minds minds and our hearts, Lord, and the love that we have for all saints, Lord, no matter uh, where they may be and whatever church they may attend. But God, we just pray that uh, uh, you would help us to, uh, to see, hear, and understand that, Lord, that whenever uh, you, you, your word is thriving, when it's being taught, when it's being preached, that all Christians, Lord, are able to thrive and survive and get through those things uh, just based upon uh, uh, the advancement of, of your kingdom. Father, help us to understand that, Lord, each and every one of us have a, has a task to do within the, uh, the, the local body of Christ that is here, but that's just a, another smaller part of a uh, of a greater body, Lord, that uh, uh, we have globally. Father, just help us to, uh, to to receive you, Lord, and what it is that you have for us here this morning. Lord, help us, to, uh, Lord, just to take our, our, our part within the body uh, serious. Lord, help us to uh, be able to thrive and to do those things. Lord, as if uh, uh, we, we just take a step back, Lord, and uh, Father, when we get lazy, Lord, and the other people have to take up the slack, Lord, that it, uh, it, it wears us out, Lord. It uh, wears us down, and then we can't focus upon our job. Father, help us all, Lord, just to, uh, to, to hear you and understand, Lord, this day, the importance, Lord, of what it is that you have going, Lord, not only within our area, but, Lord, within our state, within our country, Lord, and with the, just within your kingdom. Father, we love you. We praise you to God. Again, we just ask you to guide us through your word here this morning and open our hearts to receive you, Lord. We ask these things your son Christ Jesus name and amen as we do a lot of this reading and jumping and we're going to come back and we're going to look at several different bullet points and going through that so go back with me to the uh, Colossians in chapter number one and I want us to go back and understand that the, for this cause and we're going to look at the for this cause and whatever the cause may be the cause being of the good things that are being heard from wherever it may be if you hear of good things coming from a church and uh, let me slow down let me slow down and let me give you a let me give you a whole lot of what we say. One, when great things are coming from another body of Christ, it is easy for you and I to get jealous. 
It is easy for us to be thinking, well, why can't that be us? I, I don't know why they're doing that. Uh, and we'll begin nitpicking a congregation. We'll begin saying, well, uh, you know, they're a, uh, uh, they're a this or they're a that. or They're not even a real Bible-believing church. They're, uh, they're preachers this. They're congregations like that. Whatever it may be, we will nitpick them. We will tear them down before we ever begin praying and thanking God for the great things that he has done at another congregation because we're jealous of the fact that he hasn't done it at ours. Have I hit anybody in that statement yet? Yes. And with that mentality, how can God ever move in amongst us? When we feel so strongly against advancing the kingdom within another body of Christ, why would God want to step in and move here? How is it going to greatly affect this church, this body, this community when we are so against advancing the kingdom somewhere else? For this cause. What cause? Why are we here? What is that cause? The cause that uh, uh, we, we come to, uh, uh, you, you come to church with a purpose this morning. I, again, we, we've talked about this so many times. It's uh, uh, untelling the, the, the reasons why we may have uh, been and came, but uh, uh, no doubt we all came to church with a purpose, whether it's because somebody told us to, because we was invited, or because we desired to come and be fed the Word of God. Whatever it is, you come to church with a purpose. For this cause, we... Since the day we heard of it, pause, for this cause, since the day we heard of it, we have not uh, uh, ceased to gripe and complain about what they're doing. For this cause, since the day we heard of it, we have not uh, stopped attempting to tear down that congregation and discredit all the things that they do because they believe this way, they do that, uh, uh, they dress like this, they don't even have real pews, they have like chairs, like waiting room chairs, and they're not even a real church. They don't even play real music. Uh, uh, they don't sing hymns, they don't have a piano. All they do is they, uh, uh, they pipe their music in through a, a, a stereo, they have uh, 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 tattoos, earrings, beard, whatever it is, we don't like them because of the way they look. And for this cause, since the day we've heard of it, we have done nothing but hinder the gospel. Is that what Paul said? Is that what Paul said to the church in Coloss? It is not. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard of it, what is it he said? Do not cease to pray for you. within the body of Christ and it's all having important jobs and things to do it is each Christian's job to pray and as Jesus said uh, uh, in this manner uh, when he's teaching them how to pray uh, you can go back and you can find it everybody calls it the uh, uh, Lord's Prayer as a, a, a wise gentleman once taught me the Lord's Prayer you'll find in the latter part of the book of John this would be the model prayer there Jesus begins teaching them how to pray. And he begins to say things such as, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So if we're not going to cease to pray for this cause, we'll also find scripturally speaking that it's God's will that not any should perish, but all should come to repentance. We also understand that faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing the word of God, and people can't be saved unless they have been prevented the, or presented the gospel. Amen? You have to have heard the word taught and spoken and delivered in some form or fashion. But that's where we'll hang up. Because it needs to be delivered in a specific form and fashion, does it not? And it needs to be delivered within a church house. Things that the preacher of the Bible says that things need to be done in an orderly fashion. It needs to be done after this manner. It needs to be done like this. Man, Jesus had a... He preached a heck of a sermon when he was hanging on the cross when the guy beside him got saved, didn't he? Man, he was really wailing into them, wasn't he? 
Man, uh, the, the lady, she come up to the piano and she was playing one of the nicest, she was playing one of the greatest uh, uh, songs of invitation that had ever been of all times, and that's the way it's got to be done. That ain't how it happened, though, is it? It's not. It didn't happen that way. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you. When's the last time you heard of great things happening at another church and you just simply prayed for the church? The Lord, you keep working there. Lord, you keep working your magic. You keep working. Uh, uh, you, you keep doing great things there. Uh, you keep bringing new souls in. You keep saving them. You keep, uh, you keep attracting the youth. You, you, you keep bringing them in. You keep doing this. You keep working at where you're working. We would be more apt again. Lord, why can't you do that here? Lord, you're doing it over there at this place. Lord, this church, uh, they, they started with nothing and they're growing and they're booming. And uh, uh, Lord, just do that here. You know, we, uh, we will neglect the great things that God is doing. We won't praise him for what's happening. We simply do what the children of Israel did as they just roaming through the wilderness, which we heard in Sunday school. We'll gripe and complain about it. It's not happening where we want it to. We do not cease to pray for you and desire. Pause. If you, church member, Oakdale Baptist Church, do not desire the absolute spiritual best from the people sitting within this room, you're letting them down. Cameron, you should desire Louise to be all she can be in Christ. You should count on her that when she walks into this church house door that she's prayed up and that she's ready to receive what God has and that in no way that there would be a hindrance to any type or any part of the service, but you desire her to come in and to be ready. Do you have expectations for your brothers and sisters within the place in which you come to worship cooperatively? Because if you don't desire or have expectations for them here, I know you don't down there. We desire that you might be filled. Well, filled with what? Because let me just tell you, people walk around today and they're full of some stuff, but it ain't usually the Spirit. Amen? Sure. You can say amen to that. You can smile and snicker a little bit too. That's kind of funny, wouldn't it? We walk around, we're full of ourselves. We're full of pride. We're full of lust. We're full of jealousy. We're full of hate. We're full of a lot of things other than the Spirit, ain't we? Amen. You guys awake? If we was all full of the Spirit, uh, um, churches wouldn't be quiet. Now, I understand things need to be done in an orderly fashion. Um, you know, some churches, they, uh, they're, they're shouting churches. They are. I've been to one or two of them. I've even actually been here when that happened before. I've, I've been to some shouting churches. I've been a part of some of those. Uh, I, I've been to where uh, uh, you, you can see people reacting to the <laughs> Spirit of God. You can see uh, 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 whether it's uh, just uh, facial expressions. You can see tears in their face. You can see uh, when God is dealing with people. I, I, I've been a part of those. But I've also sat to where it's like you're at the department store and there ain't nothing but mannequins there. People with clothes sitting on them and they're very stiff and they're very uh, uh, um, just, you know, there. Desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will. And in order for you to be filled with the knowledge of the will of God, you have to read the word of God. You will never receive knowledge of God's will if you don't receive God's word. 
whether it's God's preached word, whether it's God's written word, whether it's God's saying word. If you partake in absolutely none of it, you cannot really know God's will. And then if you neglect doing all those things, if you're neglectful in them three, we won't even discuss the prayer life because it's already non-existent. If you're not willing to read the word, hear the word, we're not going to pray and listen either. Our prayers are filled with our desires. Our prayers are filled with what it is that we want. Our prayers are filled with our complaints. Our prayers are not filled with our silence to where we can hear what God is saying or, or see the direction that God would be leading. It is, a, it is as important to you and I to pray and not say a word as it is to pray and let all things be known unto God. Prayer, as we've said many times before, is a two-way street. We desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You know, you got leaders in churches today that aren't even spiritual. It's a true statement, and I just said it. There are leaders in churches that are not spiritual. There are church members that are not spiritual. There are churches that ain't spiritual. They don't do any of that part. They come in, they go through their motions, they do what it is that they've been taught to do by way of order and, you know, tradition. But they're not at all spiritual, scripted. If I gave you a flyer each week or for the month that said, this is what we're going to be preaching and I'm going to be preaching from these topics, hey, I'm not, don't, don't you... He's up here a minute. I'm not saying that all those things are wrong because God has very clearly laid out a, a series for me before. But if I come up here and read a script each week, that ain't spiritual. If I couldn't deviate uh, uh, from what may have been planned and allow uh, God to take over and whatever it may be, that's not spiritual. If I have a predetermined uh, 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 set songs that we sing uh, through uh, each and every month, and you have, okay, well, it's your turn to do special today. And it's, uh, you know, next week, Bonita, it's going to be your turn to handle all special music. We're going to have it pre planned, scripted out, and everything's going to be fine, well, and dandy. And if we're all doing things according to my plan, guess who ain't in it? The Spirit of God. But he says that it's our desire that you be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. It is also their desire since the very time that they have heard of great things happening within this church that they might walk worthy of the Lord. Church, do you have a desire from your fellow church members of how they're going to behave themselves tomorrow? I need, I need some reaction there at least nod your head do something act like you're alive do you have a desire of what you expect of your fellow church members tomorrow all right see so i'm gonna pick on you you're here closest to the front and you i ain't gotta go home with you you come to visit oak do you've come to visit several times in the past do you have a desire and a standard of expectation of what you expect this congregation how they should behave tomorrow morning throughout the day tomorrow throughout the week and they'll come again and meet again at the next appointed time do you have a desire for us you desire us to walk worthy of the lord or just to any beaten path and uh, follow any old drunk, gambler, sex addict, whatever it may be. We can just to be who we are, right? Free country. Uh, well, we have freedom. Uh, we're going to have to uh, get away from just the, uh, the, the plain, old-fashioned, simple things. Hey, it's now, it's important to, uh, to embrace that kind of stuff. Would you be appalled if you found out that I was addicted to child pornography? Would you? You should be. Would you be appalled at any of your church members that you found out had a, uh, 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 an addiction to just gambling? 
I know gambling ain't, you know, I even spend their money on the lottery tickets if they want to. Lottery tickets, preacher, that ain't even gambling. What are you talking about? I'm talking about reading their Bible and studying up on these things and uh, being knowledgeable within his will. That's what I'm talking about. Do you have a desire to know that uh, 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 the drink of choice within our house is bourbon or vodka or Bud Light or Natty Light, whatever it may be? Do you have a desire to know that the only uh, days of the week that we're sober is Sunday? Would you be appalled uh, at the, uh, uh, the, the amount of four-letter words in which we use when any, none of you guys are around? Would that be appalling to you? Would you care? Do you desire each and every one to be held accountable of our actions on every day of the week and not just Sunday? We're not going to come into uh, to church on Give me a minute, let me be real with you. If people come into church and they sit down in their pews and they started bragging about their sex life, how long would you let them sit in the pew and do it? Or talking about uh, uh, vulgar things from another man or a woman that they ran into or had in contact with earlier in the week. How long would you let them sit here and do it? How long would you let them talk about their carnal desires of the flesh that they have outside of here? Are you going to allow it to happen? Sitting right here in the blue padded pews of Oakdale, are we? No. You guys ain't willing to answer me this morning, but I already know the answers to them. No, you're not. You're going to tell somebody. We may not be the one to turn around and say, you know what, you need to know where you're at. You need to recognize the place in which you are. We don't do that. I've not yet... Let me change the way I want to say that. I have heard multiple people, multiple different times, fuss on the kids, hey, we don't run in the church house. I have fussed on my kids, said things to other kids, hey, get those drinks out of the sanctuary. If you want to eat or drink, go downstairs and do it. We ain't sitting up here and having lunch. You guys ever said that? It matters when we're teaching them, don't it? This ain't the only place you teach them, though, is it? Are you teaching them to hide what they do, or are you teaching them to embrace the Christian lifestyle? Answer the question. Which one are you doing? What are you teaching the kids? How are you teaching them to be? Are you teaching them them to desire the absolute very best of their brothers and sisters in Christ? Or are you teaching them to hide everything that you do and don't you let anybody ever find out that this happens? Hear Jamie telling a story outside a little bit ago. Somebody come to visit. I don't think they was there, but uh, it's the fall break last week and kids are kids and the house was a wreck. That's the gist of the story that I got. Somebody came into her house. I think uh, the way I understood the story, somebody even gave them a tour of her house when she wasn't there. One, I would be absolutely furious. That's my house. I'll give that to her. That's just me, though. I mean, I would I'd have to set somebody straight. That's just the way that is. But these people come in, and they saw a mess, and that ain't what she would want them to see. If she knew that whomever was coming to visit, she'd have probably done the laundry. Or at least hit it all in the bathtub and close the shower curtain. That's what we do. <laughs> ain't even close to line. You come visit my house, and the shower curtain's closed in the bathroom, peek behind it. That's where all the dirty clothes are. You got to make it look good, don't you? You got to dress it up, make it appear that it's something that it's not. I think she said, uh, the, 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 the gentleman said this statement that I caught you how you really are. Is that what he said? How many of you want to be caught how you really are? Bathrobe, no makeup, hair in a bun, mascara smeared halfway down your cheeks. Is that how you want to be caught? I've seen her like that. It's not a glorious <laughs> sight. <laughs> Do 
she came to church like that, how would you feel? Part of you would be like, well, at least she came. The other part of you would say, well, she could at least fix herself up. She could at least come in the church house presentable. I don't like it when people ain't really fresh. And by fresh, I'm talking when people just choose to stink. I mean, we are far advanced in technology. They got soap that'll smell good for like three days. There is no reason why we should stink. Amen? Freshen up. Why do you open? That's a side note. We don't want to be caught how we really are. Each and every one of us should have a desire that we walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing and being fruitful in every, every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Pause there. How many of you guys desire that you brothers and sisters increase the knowledge that they have in Christ? Today is October 17th. One year removed from last year at October 17th. Do you hope that your brothers and sisters know more about God today than they did this time last year? Or are we going to say it's a COVID learning curve? That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. Whose power? Who is this his that we're talking about? Who is the he and the his that we're about to, and the him that we're going to come through in the next several verses? This is all coming back and going to be tied directly to Christ and to God the Father. It's not through the preacher's glory. It's not through the deacon's glory. It's not your husband's glory, and it ain't your wife's glory, and it ain't your kid's glory. It ain't even the glory of the church. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power. If the church is who empowers you, you are serving the church and not serving God. I can repeat that again if I need to. You come to the church to be recharged. You come within the church house to be rejuvenated and recharged by God Almighty. God's the leader. Now, we can get into the, the, the order of things in a, uh, the, you know, the, the head of the church and then the, uh, the under shepherds, the offices of the, the church, pastors, deacons, uh, uh, whether you, you have elders, you have this, whatever committee you may have. Hey, we, we can get into the bylaws of any kind of church you want to get into. But if God isn't the source of power, then likely the devil is. Those are your only two options. It's God-centered or devil-centered. And if it's devil-centered, you're not going to know that because it's going to be presented in the manner that it is God-centered. It's up for you to know that. How are you going to know that? You're going to go back up to what the things we've just talked about. You're going to increase your knowledge in God. You're going to become spiritual. You're going to read God's word. You're going to pray. You're going to dive headfirst into spiritual things, and you're going to attempt to figure them out. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power and all patience and longsuffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Was there us and them in there? It was kind of more of a, a we lumped together, wasn't it? Who made us meet. Who made us uh, uh, able. We'll get into the, uh, uh, that a little bit here coming down in the lighter verses that are right there. But uh, uh, hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light. He is simply going back to things that Paul had uh, uh, talked about before. The, uh, the mystery of things that are in there that you get into some of the uh, verses coming through that we omitted. The mysteries of things that he's talking about. It's how uh, uh, God was once just revealed to the children of Israel. They were his chosen people. But then Christ came and uh, uh, welcomed the Gentiles into that. We are uh, through the spirit of adoption. We were grafted in. We were all the other uh, verses that uh, uh, refer to that. Nonetheless, God made us partakers. And when I say us, you can turn your head and you can look around the room, and that is us. Us is every person in here. 
a few weeks ago we talked about the us being those that you like and those that you don't. Those that you support, those that you don't. Us being the church down the road that you don't like, the church that you, uh, 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 that, that you talk bad about, uh, us being the church over here, over there, us being the church that may be on the other side of the world. Us. We, the children of God. I might be wrong. I don't think so. There's a lot of things in the Bible that I still don't know, but I don't think heaven is going to have an Oakdale section. I don't think we're going to be zoned off over here. I don't even think we're going to have a Johnson family section. I don't think that there's going to be a spot for the Nards, a spot for the Holes, a spot for the Howards, a spot for these and for those and for whomever else it's going to be because I'm pretty sure we are all God's children. Amen. We are all part of that inheritance. So why the us and them? Why is it the we and they? Should just be the we. But giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. Now, 13. We may not get much further than 13 this morning. <clears throat> who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. And the way that Paul has worded so many things and so many other letters uh, to other people and other churches, what is the power of darkness? It's a three-letter word that starts with an S. Sin. If Paul is talking about being delivered from sin, you can get back into Paul's writings to the church in Corinth that we are now inexcusable. That God's grace is not a license for you and I to live however it is that we choose. We can't just go about doing what we want to because we know that all I have to do is hit my knees and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I was wrong. Father, I, I need your forgiveness. God, I ask you to forgive me uh, of sitting and looking at pornography for three hours last night. we we'll to do it again tonight, but I need you to forgive me of it last night. God's grace is not a license to continue on doing the, the, the things of sin. Because as we see right here, what he's talking to this particular church, it says who, and who, uh, the, the who that is there is the Father, this is God, this is Christ, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Church, you should remind your brothers and sisters that, hey, God delivered you from that. You are no longer to be tied down to that sin. Now let me ask you to you this way, church. When's the last time that you told somebody, hey, God freed you from that. What are you doing? Was there ever a last time? Because if there never was a first time, there can't be a last time. Have you ever held somebody accountable? Have you ever... Uh, um, Anybody ever ask you to pray for them? And have they ever told you why they want you to pray for them? Pray for me because of this. And have you saw them take a step back from that? Maybe. Did you ever pay attention? Or you just said, okay, yeah, I'll pray for you, and then go about your business and forget that you ever said anything about it. And then when they say something about it, it reminds you, hey, uh, you remember here while back asked you to pray for this? And you're thinking, mm, sure, uh, sure, yeah, I remember. I've been praying every day about it. You ain't got a clue. Don't sit there and lie to them. Have you ever seen them uh, begin to step back in that direction? You say, hey, you wanted me to pray with you or pray for you about this? We're going to go beyond pray, and I'm going to say stop. I want to say take a step back. Know where you are. Know who you are. Know what's going on. We do this subconsciously. And I'm about to tell you what I'm talking about. 
We had a dinner last week, Pastor Appreciation Day, right? You guys have known for over a month that I've been on like some kind of weird diet. Every person walked through the line after I had sat down, every one of you looked at my plate. No, for a fact you did, because I saw you. And you was going to be thinking, Couple different thoughts because a couple of you told me your thoughts. If you weren't gonna eat, there wasn't no sense in having you dinner. MD and Matt sure did appreciate it. We cooked, you might as well eat. If you're gonna have all this stuff for you, you might as well eat it. And then there was even one who said, I'm proud of you for not giving in to all that. We're going to make it our business to know what somebody else is doing, because that's all you do it. You made it your business to know what else, what's on somebody else's plate. But we don't have the spiritual fortitude to say, hey, Miss Verna, you need to stop. Miss Verna, you need to take a step back. Miss Verna, you know what you're doing is wrong. We're not going to pick up the phone and say, hey, Cecil, um, this may be none of my business. But it appears as this is what's going on. And he may say, you know what, it really ain't none of your business, and that ain't what's going on. But he could at least say, well, if that is the way it appears, and if you perceive it that way, somebody else might too. Thank you. I'll work on that. I'll see if we can get that straightened up. It, it, it doesn't have to be in a manner of, uh, oh, they're going to get mad, they're going to get angry, they're going to do this, they're going to start uh, in this manner. It comes to the point of whether or not you desire the best of your brothers and sisters or whether you are going to settle for having a uh, mediocre church, spiritual life, prayer life. How many of you guys wish we'd done some things different at Oakdale? You wish we'd done more of this or less of that? You ever had any of those thoughts? Shake your head, because you have, because you've talked to me about them. You ever took the initiative to take it upon yourself to do it? Nope. Somebody else's job, ain't it? It ain't ours. I wish the preacher wouldn't preach past 12. I wish we'd sing more songs, but I ain't going to be the one to sing them. I wish we would, uh, I wish we would uh, uh, have more uh, things of fellowship, but I'm not going to plan them. I wish we'd have a Christmas play, but I ain't signing up for it. All things have been said to me, each and every one of them. Except for the I'm not part. But you say that yourself. What do you desire? If the church down here is booming, do you desire to be booming like them? If the church over here is seeing all sorts of new visitors and uh, uh, lost people come in and they, they don't even have to drain the water in their baptistry because there's all time new people coming in that's getting saved and being baptized. Do you desire that? Do something about it. You have to hold one another accountable. You have to be on fire for God because if you're going to be willing to sit there and be a cold, lumpy rock within the pew, everyone else is going to be content in doing the same thing. Amen. For this cause, we don't cease to pray for you. Do you pray for the people you go to church with in any manner? Do you pray that they would change? Do you pray that they'd be more like you? Do you pray that they'd be less like them? If we're praying for them, are we praying in the right way? So we're praying the right things. Do we have a, a desire for something to be? Do we want them to be filled with knowledge of his will? Do we want them to be filled with wisdom of spiritual understanding? Hey, do we want them to be filled with anything other than themselves? you even care how people walk? If we don't, these are all problems that have been identified likely by ourselves here this morning that we need to work on. 
If we're not willing to work on them and we are not doing to do, not willing to do anything that we have read thus far, leave your keys at the back door. We'll go ahead and lock them and we'll lock the keys in here because there's no sense in meeting. There is no sense in coming back to Oakdale if we're not willing to do what God has asked us to do. We can meet, we can sing, we can pray, we can preach, we can go through the motions, but if we are not willing to be God's people, there is no sense in coming back. Preacher, that's mean and that's harsh. That's the truth. That is the truth. We have the opinion that we expect this to happen. We expect, we expect two revivals a year. We expect a Bible school. We expect a Christmas play. Hey, we expect a Sunday night service. We expect Wednesday night service. We expect to go through all these things, but we ain't going to be no part of it. Getting people to, to help a Bible school, like pulling hen's teeth, ain't it? The last two times we've had it, my words to her was just stop. If nobody wants to help, don't have one. That's what I said. She kept going. She muddled through. Told that to Miss Vernon the last time she directed the play. Hey, if ain't never going to be in it, we won't have one. You guys have any idea how many people signed up for the Christmas play this year? I'll go ahead and tell you, not enough. Let me tell you, December the 12th, when we meet here that night, we just have in church. You can't have a play when nobody is in it. You can't have a church when nobody is in those. You can't have Bible study if nobody's here to study the Bible. You can't have a worship service if nobody is willing to worship. And it all starts with us. Each one sitting here. Us. Preacher, I wish you would shut up and I wish you would quit fussing on us. That's the look that you're giving me. I'm not trying to be mean. It is my desire that we sit shoulder to shoulder and there ain't room for nobody else in here. It is my desire that we have to have church outside because we can't fit in. What's your desire? What do you want out of it? What do you want to see Oakdale do? Where do you want to see Oakdale go? Small country churches we're doing this right here, right above the drain. It's all we can do to keep the doors open. It's all you can do to get people to come in and keep coming back. Circling the drain, small churches are dying. What are you gonna do about it? Let's stand together this morning.